This is Hope Matters, a production of Mount Olive Lutheran Church here in Santa Maria, California. I am Eric Schaefer, the senior pastor here at Mount Olive, and each week we talk to interesting people and we talk about hope. And today I'm so pleased that our special guest is Dr. Kathy Herring, the newly uh, elected president of Muhlenberg College in Allentown, Pennsylvania, a college of our Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And, um, you know, you're supposed to, you know, on, Kathy, on TV, when they, when, they, when they say things that connect you, they have to say the background. So I'm a graduate of Muhlenberg College. I serve on the Board of Trustees as a retired trustee, and Kathy was a parishioner of mine at Trinity Lansdale. So we come to this interview with, with a lot of connections, don't we? We definitely do. As well, I would say, I say in a contemporary ensemble with uh, Eric's wife standing right next to me as we were singing. So uh, uh, many, many deep connections. Uh, tell, so tell folks about, about yourself and, and a little bit about Muhlenberg, because uh, I think many people in this program will not know about Muhlenberg. And uh, you've been at Muhlenberg for much of your academic career. You worked your way up, so to speak. <laughs> I definitely did. Um, I am originally from Pennsylvania, grew up in uh, north central Pennsylvania, and um, uh, was born into the, the Lutheran Church. Um, very involved as a, a young person, as a, a young adult in our um, youth ministry, as well as in um, teaching Sunday school and, and helping my mother with the, uh, the chair of choir. And so that has been, the, the church and particularly the Lutheran church has been a, a very important foundation, I think of, of my background and, and my way of knowing in, in the world. As, uh, as Eric, you mentioned, I've been at Muhlenberg for a, a very long time. Uh, this is my 36 years at, at Muhlenberg. I, I keep on reminding people I started very early. That's right. When I was about 14. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I was hired as an assistant professor in psychology. I am trained as a social psychologist with a concentration in quantitative psychology in statistics. And, um, came right to Muhlenberg from my graduate training at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. So was uh, very green when I started at Muhlenberg way back uh, in, in the mid 1980s. Um, as Eric, you noted, I've had many, many leadership roles um, at the institution and moved over into administration in, I think it was probably 2005, 2006. Um, most recently, before being appointed president, I was um, the provost overseeing um, all of academic affairs, and I served for a year as the interim president and just recently was appointed as the 13th president of Muhlenberg College. That's really wonderful. The first woman president of Muhlenberg College, is that correct? That is correct. And and actually, though, as I look over the ELCA colleges, there are quite a few women presidents of, the, of Lutheran colleges right now across the country. There definitely are. And, and I would say not just uh, Lutheran colleges, but when I am uh, together with my uh, consortium colleagues, small liberal arts colleges, uh, we definitely are seeing more women who are at the helm leading uh, particularly small liberal arts colleges in, in our area. You know, I think our viewers would be curious as to, we're going to talk about a number of things, but in light of COVID-19, what's Muhlenberg doing for classes this fall? So um, we are, our plan is to be back on campus. We've made some changes to the fall. Uh, we are starting early, uh, about a week earlier than we usually do. And we are ending um, in-person classes right before Thanksgiving, giving students a, a week long break and then ending the semester um, with two weeks of, of online classes and then finals. And the rationale behind that, which by the way is aligns with the guidance we received from the state of Pennsylvania for reopening colleges and universities, is that we really want to limit students um, travel to and from the institution. So we have eliminated fall break and um, making sure that 
if there is a resurgence and particularly connected with flu season that our students are off campus in order to make sure that we um, keep everyone as safe and healthy as possible. The um, campus is gonna be very different. Um, we will be offering a variety of courses in some in-person courses, some fully online courses, as well as what we would call blended courses where there might be in-person components. Um, let's say a, a large lecture class will be, the lecture will be online, and then the recitations or, or laboratory sessions would be in-person in, -person in uh, classrooms that have been redesigned or labs that have been redesigned to be able to uh, align with the physical distancing requirements. Um, masks are gonna be required. We'll be having testing, uh, contact tracing, all sorts of other measures in place to make sure that all members of the community are kept healthy and safe. And obviously um, culture and, and changing culture and expectations and norms is something that's incredibly important. Um, I am actually very confident that we will be able to implement the public health measures. Muhlenberg, as I think you would attest, um, Eric is a very, very special place. Um, community is, is very strong and, and taking care of one another. And I would say, you know, the, the ethos of care and compassion for each member of the community is, is prioritized. I, I think, you know, I, I think that is worth highlighting. And, you know, <laughs> Kathy, you've been there long enough to, it's better than it was. I mean, it wasn't always, it's always been a good place. No question, you know, I mean, and I, and I love my time there, but over the years, I've seen that strengthen mm -hmm. and your leadership also, but I think, you know, um, that's something you work at over time. Sure. I think that's definitely the case. And, you know, we um, actually, during orientation, uh, we are going to be having a series of facilitated conversations of readings with students, particularly about community and um, mutual aid and what that means for being in um, a college community, how each one of us is responsible for taking care of those who we learn, uh, live and work with. Wonderful. Well, let's, let's talk about uh, hope for a minute. Um, you were, you were interim president, and in the midst of being interim president, you know, we had how many pandemics? We had a pandemic of disease, we had a pandemic of, of the realization of racism, and racism has been along, around a long time. We've had all kinds of other things. And so you've had a lot of unique challenges that you weren't expecting, I'm sure. So, but what does bring you hope, Kathy, as you look in your, in your life, in your work, uh, what brings hope in your life these days? That's a really good question. <laughs> and I think I reflect on that an awful lot. Um, in no way is there a playbook for how to lead a college or university uh, during this time. And so I think very much um, having, having hope and using hope as sort of a means for action and problem solving is incredibly important. Um, from a personal standpoint, what, what brings me hope is I think very much the relationships that I have with those who care about me and who I care about very deeply. And that's not just family, that's, you know, goes beyond to my, my college community, um, students, faculty, staff, alums. It's been incredibly, um, overwhelming uh, as I was named the official president of Muhlenberg College to get such lovely messages from um, sometimes uh, former students who I've not heard from in years. And, and those um, messages of support, of congratulations, of sometimes guidance and advice are incredibly important for me in terms of really um, buoying me, giving me hope that, that you know, I, as well as those who I work with, can manage and, uh, as our chaplain would say, go through this crisis. Um, relationships are incredibly important, I think, as sources of hope. Yeah, yeah that's wonderful. Um, 
you know, on a, on a, on a more, on an even more personal basis, you know, I, I like to ask people, what gets you up in the morning? You know, um, you know, you, 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 you know, what keeps you from wanting to pull up the covers and stay in bed? <laughs> well, I mean, that's a really good question. I could say, uh, cause I need to get up and get my cup of tea. <laughs> um, but, but again, I would say that, that what, what kind of give, gets me up in the morning, first of all, knowing that I work and um, I collaborate, I partner with such fabulous individuals who we are all working toward the same shared goal. Um, and I can count on them. Um, and, and it's not just my senior staff, it is um, other managers and staff at the institution, it's faculty, it's students. I have several students who are, uh, I think, incredible sources of, of optimism and, and hope for me as particularly we navigate some of the challenges with, as you noted, both the health pandemic and the pandemic of racism. That's great, thank you. Well, we could talk a lot and a lot longer and uh, we, we try to keep these interviews uh, in a certain length, but we, the, the, the wonderful thing about YouTube is that uh, you're not committed to any time block, so that's good. <laughs> and, uh, um, but I would like our viewers to know that if you have college age uh, children, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'll do Kathy's commercial, you should take a look at Nuremberg College in Allentown, Pennsylvania a college of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Uh, of all the Lutheran schools, it's one of the most diverse, both in religion and in racial mix, mix and uh, um, takes those concerns of diversity seriously and, 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 and believes that the diverse community is a stronger community. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, not hard to find. Muhlenberg's hard to spell, but it's not too hard to find muhlenberg.edu online. So, um, and for those of you, of course, of, of Lutheran background, you know that the name Muhlenberg comes from the founder of Lutheranism in North America, Henry Melchior Muhlenberg, and his family was actually involved in the early leadership of the college. Uh, so, long history, but that's another interview. Isn't it? <laughs> and, uh, thank you so much, Eric, for the commercial. <laughs> thank you for being with us, Kathy. We're so glad. This is Hope Matters, where every week we talk to people around the country and around the world about hope in their lives because we have a God of hope. Thank you for joining us today on Hope Matters. Thank you, Kathy, for being with us. Thank and remember, you so much, Eric. In our lives, hope matters. Thank you.